Hello and a very good afternoon. You're with Lunchtime News. I'm Dasni Atada for News First and let's start off with a look at your headlines. The Bar Association holds elections to choose its 24th president. Ministry of Ports and Shipping says talks to free captured Sri Lankan crew members and vessel off the coast of Somalia will be held today. Spread of dengue in Kenya prompts a three-day closure of schools in the area. Bangladesh make early inroads into the Sri Lankan batting lineup in second test. Now in your lead story, the Ministry of Ports and Shipping says a discussion will be held with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs today on what measures should be taken to free the vessel hijacked by Somali pirates. Meanwhile, foreign media reports say the hijackers who seized the oil tanker and its eight-man crew of Somalia are demanding compensation for a rise in illegal fishing in Somali waters. The Voice of America said its Somali service spoke by phone to one of the hijackers yesterday. The hijacker said seven men took part in the raid. He asserted that he and his colleagues are fishermen, not pirates. EOS Risk, a UK-based global corporate security risk in crisis management business, tweeted saying that the hijacked vessel is moving westbound at 4.4 knots and questions if the vessel is being moved by pirates or has it been freed by local forces. Reuters quoting a regional police official says security forces have been sent to free the Aries 13. The oil tanker with eight Sri Lankan crew on board was carrying fuel from Djibouti to Mogadishu when it was hijacked on the 13th. The said oil tanker had departed the Colombo Harbour at around 5.30 p.m. on the 28th of January bound for the port of Mogadishu in Somalia carrying oil and gas. The hijackers had boarded the sea ship about 30 kilometres off the Somali coast, then anchored off Alula, a town in Somalia's Puntland region. Foreign media reported that the vessel had lost all forms of communication and had disappeared off radars the night before last. The ship, which is owned by a company in the United Arab Emirates, flew a flag from the Comoros Islands. A further update. We understand uh, that the crew are all safe. This was um, notified to us uh, yesterday. Um, uh, that there had been communication by uh, naval forces with the ship and the pirates and the, all of the Sri Lankan crew are safe. Now we wait for the matter to be resolved by negotiation, which is um, a more preferable route to any form of uh, military action. The elections of the Bar Association of Sri Lanka to elect its 24th president commenced this morning. The association's secretary, attorney at law Amal Randania, said three candidates have submitted nominations for the post. Around 14,000 lawyers are casting their vote at 77 centres established across the country. Attorneys at law U R De Silva, Anuramed Degoda, and R R S Thangaraja are vying for the top spot. Two of the main candidates cast their vote at the election center established at the Colombo Court complex premises. Lawyers across the country also cast their vote in several areas to elect the 24th president of the Bar Association of Sri Lanka. All schools which fall under the purview of the Kenya Educational Zone in Trincomalee will be closed for three days starting today due to the rapid spread of the dengue epidemic. Ahmad Lebe, the Zonal Education Director of Trincomalee, said the decision had been taken after taking into consideration the safety of the children. Our correspondent said parents and teachers of the closed schools in Trincomalee arrived to the schools to clean the premises. Meanwhile, 12 deaths caused by dengue have been reported over the past week from the Kenya area in Trincomalee. Health Director of the Eastern Province, Dr. K. Muranganathan, says 2,000 cases of dengue have been reported from the area. A man who attempted to attack his wife in the Palagama area in Kiria Laddan Mulla has died after being assaulted by area residents. The wife of the deceased said the husband attempted to attack her with a knife and a bottle of acid. The said individual was attacked by the area residents following the distress calls of the wife. 
मटकुआ क्या करने वाला केला पिया दिकरा इसमें तात्रा ये क्या क्या हुआ ये रात्रि इनको डे मदद माँ बाई के ला पिया तीनों आनी ना ऐसी बहुत अलग पिनो में जी ऐसी तीन ने ऐसी कहाँ क्या करने का इसे तो हाँ ये क्या करने भी हुआ According to our correspondent, the husband who sustained severe injuries following the attack had been admitted to the Kiriala General Hospital by the area residents where he succumbed to his injuries. Police said it had launched investigations with regard to the incident. Our correspondent said that an inquest into the incident was conducted by the Ratnapura magistrate yesterday. Today marks World Consumer Rights Day. The theme for this year chosen by the International Consumer Affairs Authority for the year 2017 is building a digital world consumers can trust. The aim of this year's theme is to promote transparency between transactions done by consumers when receiving services online. The Consumer Affairs Authority adds that the national summit held in line with the World Consumer Rights Day will take place at 3 p.m. this afternoon under the auspices of President Maitri Pala Sena at the Nelum Pokona Theatre. According to Hasita Tilaka Ratna, the chairman of the Consumer Affairs Authority, the main aim of this year's national summit is to formulate new policies to overcome issues faced by the Sri Lankan consumer who transact digitally. Student Local News Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Korea, Yung Byung Se, arrived in Sri Lanka last night on an official visit. According to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the visit marks the 40th anniversary of diplomatic relations between Sri Lanka and the Republic of Korea. Minister Yun is also scheduled to hold bilateral discussions with Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mangala Samaravira, today. This is the first time in 31 years since 1986 that a Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Korea is visiting Sri Lanka. Welcome back to the news. Today marks the 100th day of the second phase of the Gammatha initiative. Several projects which have launched under this public service initiative with the people and for the people has provided comfort to those in distress. Members of News First were invited to the celebratory festivities organized by the people across the country today. The ceremony was held at the Sansungama village in Hinguragoda in the Anuradhapura district this morning. The village received a water project under the Gamma the initiative a few months ago. Ceremonies were also organized in the Madhavachya and Padavia areas. Meanwhile, a ceremony to celebrate the 100th day of the second phase of the Gammadha initiative was organized at the Kanda Kolia Samudra Sanna Vihare in Kalpitiya. The Dharma Shalava of the Vihare was renovated under the Gammadha 100 day initiative. Meanwhile, the public had also organized ceremonies in the Vaunia, Monroagala, Ahangama, and Kalutara areas. <laughs> 